I often recommend avoiding the string class in Arduino programs, but I never took the time to show you the alternatives. In this video, I will teach you how to format complex strings without the string class. Hi, I'm Benoit, and welcome to this new episode of C++ for Arduino. In this video, we'll see how to get rid of the string class for the most common operations, string formatting. Let me show you what I mean by string formatting. Imagine you want to compose this string. This URL includes two variables, user and page. Here is how most people compose this URL. They wrap the first part in a string. They add the first variable. They append the next part and they add the second variable. While this technique works and is quite fast, I recommend avoiding it because it increases the heap fragmentation. Indeed, each new string requires a new allocation in the heap, and each allocation is an opportunity to increase the fragmentation. If you don't know what the heap fragmentation is, please watch my video on the topic. So, how can we format strings without the string class? Let's take some distance with C++ for a moment and get back to plain old C. As you probably know, we can use any C feature in C++, and that's what we are going to do now. We'll format strings as C programmers do. First, let's look at how the C language models strings. This picture shows how the bytes of the string hello are laid out in RAM. In C, a string is a contiguous sequence of characters ended by a zero. We call this last byte the terminator, because it marks the end of the sequence. Keep this picture in mind, because every time you write a string literal, this is exactly what goes in memory, whether you use the string class or not. Indeed, the string class is just a fancy wrapper on top of a C string. Everything you can do with the string class, you can also do with a C string, even if it's usually a bit more complicated. If you've done any C programming, you probably use the printf function to write things to the terminal. Printf is the equivalent of Arduino serial.print. The major difference between printf and serial.print is that before passing the things you want to write, you must tell printf the type of those things. For example, suppose you have a float that contains the weight of something, and you want to display it. On Arduino, you would write this. In C, you would write this instead. As you see, we need to pass an extra argument that specifies the type. In this case, %f means that we are passing a floating point value. We'll see more examples in a moment, but first, let me explain how this relates to strings. As you know, serial.print sends information to the serial port, but doesn't store anything. Similarly, printf sends information to the terminal, but doesn't store anything. To save the result in a string, we need to use another function called sprintf. This function takes a destination buffer as an additional argument. The destination comes first in the argument list, before the format, and before the values you want to write. If we go back to our previous example, to store the string on Arduino, you would probably write this. In C, you would write that instead. As you can see, the C version is a little more verbal. In addition to calling sprintf, we need to allocate the sequence of characters. In this case, we use a simple char array large enough to store the string with the terminator. Now you see a major difference between the two approaches. The Arduino version uses a string which allocates the right number of bytes in the heap, whereas the C version allocates a fixed number of bytes in the stack. You probably worry about the overhead caused by the unused bytes in the array. You're right. There can be up to 14 unused bytes in the array. But honestly, this is nothing compared to what you lose from the heap management data and from the heap fragmentation. 
Moreover, this is a local variable, so we will claim it as soon as it gets out of scope. Now, I'm not worried about the memory overhead, but I'm seriously concerned about buffer overflows. So, what happens if you've been too cheap when allocating the string and the actual content is longer than expected? I'll tell you what happens. Bad things. Sprintf is not aware of the capacity of the destination buffer, so it continues to write as if nothing happened. In practice, it overrides the bytes that follow the buffer in RAM. For example, if there is an integer variable stored just after the buffer, the value of this variable will change. This is what we call a buffer overflow. And this is a real security issue. Not only a buffer overflow may crash your program, but it also allows hackers to modify the memory of your process and change its behavior. To protect your program against buffer overflows, you must use another variant called SNPrintf, which supports an additional parameter to specify the capacity of the destination buffer. Let's see it in action. This is our previous example. We simply have to replace SPrintf with SNPrintf and specify the capacity of the buffer. I use the literal 16 here, but we can use size of instead. We saw how we could use SNPrintf to convert a float to a string. Is that all we can do? Of course not. This was just an introduction. SNPrintf is very flexible, as we'll see now. First, let's see how we can put this float in a sentence. Imagine we want to generate this string from the wait variable. With the string class, you would do something like that. Now, let's see how we will write the same line with SNPrintf. The syntax is a bit more clunky, but as soon as you get used to it, and every C programmer got used to it before you, it reads fairly well too. As you can see, the %f that was our complete format specification is now a placeholder for the value. If you want to format your number in a certain way, you can say so in the format string. For example, if you want four digits after the decimal point, you can write that. As a reminder, this is how you will do with the string class. Which one is the most readable now? As I said, we are not limited to float. Let's see other types now. Remember that you must adapt the format specifier to the type of the value. Percent %f was only for floats. For different types, you must use other specifiers like percent %i, percent %x, or percent %s. You can easily find the complete list on the internet. I will show you the list from the KNR book. Here is the F that we used previously. The other for common formats are I for integer, X for hexadecimal, and S for string. I think you get the idea. It doesn't make sense to see each format one by one. Instead, I invite you to experiment by yourself. Now, let's see how we can use several placeholders in the same string. Suppose we want to create this string from the two variables name and age. Just as you might expect, we invoke SNPrintf like that. As you see, we use the %f format for the string and the percent %i for the integer. Note that I'm using a char pointer for the string. Indeed, SNPrintf is a C function, so it knows nothing about C++ object. It only supports C strings. If instead we add a string object, we will have to get the pointer to the internal C string like that. Also, notice the order of the arguments. The value appears in the same order as the placeholder. This is a constraint imposed by printf functions. The argument must be in the same order as the placeholders in the format string. What happens if you pass the argument in the wrong order? For %i, it's not so bad. 
as and printf will treat name as an integer instead of a string. In practice, it will print the address of the string in decimal. Things get way worse for percent %s, because s and printf will treat the integer as a string. It will look for the bytes at the address specified in the integer and print them until it finds the terminator. In practice, this will write garbage in the destination buffer. Here too, we have a potential security issue. Let me show you. Here you can see the previous example working as expected. Now let's see what happens if I reverse the arguments. First, we see that the compiler emits two warnings, one for percent %s and one for percent %i. Both warnings clearly say that the format expects one type but received an argument of another type. Then we see that the program produces incorrect output. Here, 274 is the address of the name string in memory. And these strange characters reflect the content of the memory at the address 10. If you want to do a fun experiment, set the age to 274. As you can see, it now shows the right string again. That makes sense, right? 274 is the address of the string in memory, as we just discovered. Since we can put any value for the age, we can look at any location in memory. An attacker could exploit this bug to dump the content of the memory possibly finding some secrets like API keys or passwords. As we saw, the compiler helps you find the bugs in the format strings. That's yet another reason why you should never ignore warnings. Because this verification is done by the compiler, it can only work if the format string is available at compile time. In other words, it only works if you pass a constant as the format string. Remember this, never use a variable as the format string, always use a constant. In particular, never use a string that comes from a user input as the format string because it would be an easy target for hackers. And when I say user input, I mean anything that comes from outside of your code, including configuration files, HTTP requests or responses. Ignoring this commandment would open the door to a format string attack. We are close to the end of this video. And before we finish, I'd like to present to you my all-time favorite function of the whole Arduino ecosystem. It has everything. Formatted output, output buffer, buffer size, and flash memory. In other words, it's the holy grail. Let's see this wonder in action. This is our previous example. All we have to do is update the function name and pass a flash string. Note that I'm using the PSTR macro and not the usual F macro. That's because the argument must be a regular char pointer. OK, I think we saw everything you need to learn by yourself. Let's wrap this up. Are there some drawbacks to this technique? Unfortunately, yes. First, for reasons that are not clear to me, the Arduino team decided to disable the support for float in the AVR implementation of SNPrintf. This means that you cannot use percent %f on Arduino Uno and similar boards. That's a real bummer. The second drawback is that SNPrintf is kind of slow. So, depending on your use case, you may run a little slower than with the string class. But think of the advantages. First, 
SNPrintf offers many more formatting options than string. Second, your program becomes more reliable because it puts less pressure on the heap and is not subject to fragmentation. This is crucial if your device must run 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Then, when the string gets more complex, format strings offer a more readable and more compact syntax. Finally, SNPrintf is a standard function which allows your code to be compiled for other platforms. For example, it allows you to unit test parts of your program on your computer. That's all for this video. I hope it will help you become a better programmer. Please leave a comment if you have any question. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.